large city and in the territory on West. There's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad. The story of the violence that moved west with young America. The story of a man who moved with it. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. Chester. Chester. Chester, where are you? Back here, Mr. Dillon. Well, come on out. Yes, sir, Mr. Dillon. As soon as I get my boots on. Your boots on? What are you doing? Sleeping? No, sir. Just washing my feet. <laughs> well, now, I hope you didn't have any plans for tonight. Uh, what did you want me to do, Mr. Dillon? God, I want you to stay on Front Street for a few hours while I go up and have a toddy with Big Kate. But if you're going to oh, be busy... Oh, no, sir. Well... I haven't got anything to do. I'd be proud to stay here. <laughs> Just look at the dust in that street. Uh-oh. Mr. Dillon? Huh? Looks like Major Randall from Fort Dodd crossing over here. Ah. Open the door for him, Chester. <laughs> Major will like that. Come in, Major Randall. Come in, sir. Marshal Dillon. Hello, Major. Marshal, I want to talk to you about last Saturday's affair. Well, Saturday was a pretty lively day around here, Major. Which affair do you mean? You surprised me, Marshal. Two United States Army soldiers were murdered while driving a supply wagon from here to Fort Dodge. A government payroll was stolen, and you seem to have taken no interest in the matter. Well, now, Major, protecting the Army isn't exactly... The Army can protect itself, Marshal. That isn't the point at all. Well, if that's true, Major, how come there were only two soldiers carrying your payroll? You got plenty of men out there and plenty of guns. Where were they? On maneuvers. On maneuvers? In my command, Marshal, troops remain in garrison as little as possible. Well, then you were asking for trouble, Major, knowing that there was a payroll coming in. The arrival of the payroll was secret. Even the two men carrying it didn't know what it was. Well, the word must have got out somehow. It seems to me, Major, like somebody out at the fort must have told them. There are no traitors in my command, Sheriff. Uh, Major, I'm not a sheriff. You, you see, it's more Never like mind. I... Marshal, I demand to know what you intend doing about this crime. All right, I'll tell you, Major. Nothing. What? If I knew who did it, I'd make the arrest, but I don't, so there's nothing I can do. I see. Well, Marshal, I regard this crime as a demonstration of your inability to control these Dodge City ruffians, and therefore I shall do it myself. How's that, Major? If no arrests are made in this matter, I'll give these bad men of yours a taste of martial law. We'll see how they like that. I wouldn't try that, Major. These streets will be patrolled 24 now hours. Now, listen back. to me, Major. You don't know these men. Sure, there are some bad ones here, but most of them are just wild. Free and wild. But you run the army in here, and they'll all fight. Hmm. Let them. You've been stationed at Fort Dodge two months now, haven't you, Major? How long have you been out on the frontier? This is my first tour, thank heaven. Well, then I advise you to take it easy. You get to know the ways of this land. You may save your advice, Marshal. There'll be trouble, Major, bad trouble. If necessary. Nonetheless, the army will take over within the week, or before, if there are any more of these crimes committed against it. Good day, gentlemen. My. You think he'll do it, Mr. Dillon? Yeah, he made a mistake, and he's a hot-headed fool, Chester. You try it. Well, can't you stop him? I don't know. Well, I'll be at Big Kate's later on. You can find me there if you need me. All right, Mr. Dillon. Hey, Marshal, come here. What is it, Shiloh? There's talk of Dodge being run by the Army, Marshal. So? So I don't like it. I and most of the men around here got out back in 65. We've had all the Army we need. Yeah, I know. But maybe things will work out. And if they don't work out, which side are you fighting on, Dylan? Where do you stand? I'm hired to keep the peace, Shiloh, not to answer fool questions. 
You calling me a fool? Well, say it. No, you're drunk, Shiloh. You saying I'm drunk, Marshal? Is that it? All right, Shiloh, I'll show you how drunk you are. Now, when he comes around, tell him I took his gun. He can get it back in the morning. And if he objects to that, tell him to look me up and I'll throw him in jail. It's Matt, Kate. Well, come on in. Well, sit down, Matt. I'll get you a toddy. Thank you, Kate. You could thank me best for buying a drink at the bar downstairs once in a while. Well, why should I? I get better whiskey for free up here. <laughs> at least you're honest. Well, what's in the wind, Marshal Dillon? Would you just come up here because you're tired of sitting with your back to a wall? <laughs> you're right, Kate. It's the only place in Dodge where I can relax. That's probably just because you don't consider me worth killing. Uh, how old am I, Matt? <coughs> what? You heard me. Well, uh, I never thought much about it, Kate. You sure didn't. What are you getting at, anyway? Just that if I was 20 years younger, you probably wouldn't come here at all. No? And <laughs> why? Here's your toddy. Forget it. <laughs> Anything you say, Kate. You know, Matt, you ought to get yourself a girl. Oh, no, Kate, don't say that. I mean that. it, Please. sure. Somebody like, we'll say Connie Dell. There's a real pretty girl. A lot of fire. <laughs> oh, you're sure a conniving old woman, Kate. You're just no good at all, you are. <laughs> <laughs> you say worse than that. I told Connie she'd come up and have a drink with us the next time you show me. All right, Kate, if it pleases you. It does. Now, there's fresh cigars in that box by your chair, Matt. Well, now. Uh, Had them brought in by the Santa Fe Railroad all the way from St. Louis. Evening, Miss Kate. Oh, come on in, Connie. I've corralled the marshal for you. Sit down, honey. I'll fix you a drink. Uh, don't let her talk bother you, Connie. <laughs> well, I, I did ask to meet you, Marshal. Oh? No? Why? Why'd you want to meet me? Hmm. Maybe just to see if you're really as cold and cruel as you seem downstairs. And? I can't tell yet. But I don't think you are. Yeah, a profession like mine leaves its mark on a man. There's always trouble of some kind, isn't there? Most always. Like this army business now. Yeah. Will it be bad, Marshal? Yeah, it could be. Well, I'll figure it this way, Matt. The Major's in trouble, and he's trying to cover it up by threatening to take over Dodge. Well, any more difficulties, and he will do it. Blasted green work. Uh, say, Connie, your corporal been in? He left a while ago. Well, what's he say? How do the soldiers feel about all this? Well, I don't think they want to mix it with all these gunmen and buffalo hunters and the like. Yeah. The Major will wish he were back on maneuvers if it starts. Maneuvers? So that's where they've all been. No wonder it's been so quiet... But that corporal of yours, Connie, how come he didn't go out? He's not my corporal, Miss Kate. He, he's just a lonely kid. <laughs> All right. Seems like he spends more time here than at the fort. How's he manage that? Oh, they made him a clerk, a sort of bookkeeper. His time's pretty much his own. Uh-huh. Well, he's lucky. He's got a good, safe job, too. I suppose it is. Well, I I'd better get back. Now that we've met, Marshal, you might stop and buy me a drink next time you... I'm afraid not, Connie. No? You're too distracting. I might get careless and shot at. I take that as a compliment, Marshal. It is. Good night, Marshal. Thanks, Mr. Don't you mention it, honey. Well, Matt? You said her name's Connie Dell, Kate. Where's she from? I never ask the girls anything. <laughs> yeah, maybe, but you always find out. Now, come on, tell me. Hey, City, last. Uh-huh. Uh, what's the name of this corporal who's been sniffing around? Bowers, Corporal Bowers. Oh, here, let me sweeten that toddy for you. All right. You put me in mind of a man I knew back in Wichita. Yeah? He was the slipperiest, side-winding, <laughs> the stubbornest man I ever knew.
Evening, Mr. Dillon. Everything quiet, Chester? Yes, sir. But it's like everybody's holding his juice for the army if it comes. It's quiet and mean, Mr. Dillon. That's it, just, just quiet and mean. Yeah. All right, Chester, you can go to bed. I'll stay around for a little while longer. Yes, Mr. Dillon. Oh, uh, the first thing in the morning, I want you to go to the depot and have them send a message to the sheriff in Hayes City. That'd be Mr. Hickok? Yeah, ask Bill to send me all the information he can about a dance hall girl named Connie Dell. She left there about a month ago. Connie Dell. I'll do it, Mr. Dell. And uh, bring me the answer as soon as it comes in, huh? Well, we ought to have it by tomorrow evening. Yeah, I hope so. Well, good night, Chester. Good night, Mr. Dillon. <laughs> Hightower down at the railroad depot, Mr. Dillon. It'd come in at 7 o'clock. Oh, good. Let me see it, Chester. Here. Uh, Connie Dell worked Golden Horn Bar here. Left about a month ago. A stranger and called Billy Grounds. Nothing against girl, but believe Grounds a wild one. Has anybody shot you yet? <laughs> Regards, Hickok. Um, what's up, Mr. Dillon? Well, I don't know, Chester. I don't quite know. Uh, look, you go over and ask Big Kate if she's heard anything about this Billy Grounds. All right, Mr. Grounds. Marshal? Huh? Well, what is it, Shiloh? I want you to smell my gun. Here. Here. What? And go on, smell it. Uh, all right. It hasn't been fired. What are you worried about? Well, uh, I've been talking a lot lately, and a, a man was just shot out behind the long branch. A soldier. Any witnesses to this? Well, who saw it? I, I, I just heard the shot. I want to know who killed this soldier. Well, maybe nobody did see it, Marshal. And maybe nobody cares much about it anyway. Just a soldier. <laughs> Wait a minute. All right, you men, I'm going to tell you something. If I don't find who shot this man, the army will move in here for sure. Not the whole army, Marshal. They won't all move in. Why not? My shop's rifle can kill a buffalo at 200 yards. I reckon it'll kill soldiers at three. <laughs> hey, let me through here. Let me through. Let me through here. Hello, Marshal. Well, what have we got this time? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Soldier. Yeah. Well, he needs an autopsy just like anybody else. That was the man that shot him. he get hurt, maybe? Take a good look, Doc. He isn't even armed. This isn't a shooting. This is a murder. Hey, you're right, Marshal. Oh, well, I'll get him up to my office. Here, now give me a hand, somebody. You may have a better day tomorrow, Doc, but I hope I can spoil it for you. I'm riding out to Fort Dodge right now. Well, Marshal, what brings you here? Trouble, Major. What sort of trouble? Murder. A soldier? Yeah. Who? I don't know. Some private. Why haven't I been informed of this? It just happened about an hour ago. In Dodge City, of course. In Dodge City. Have you arrested the murderer? Nobody saw it happen. I see. Well, Marshal, you leave me no choice. I shall have now, to... Now, hold it, Major. I didn't ride out here just to carry news for you. I want something from you. From me, Marshal? Yeah. I want you to keep all soldiers out of Dodge for the next 48 hours. Put it off limits. <laughs> That's not exactly what I had in mind, Marshal. But you're going to do it anyway. What? Now listen, Major. Dodge City's an armed camp. It's full of men who fought Indians, who fought the war between the states, and who fought each other ever since they could spit. They'll fight you next. And they'll make you hate it. Marshal Dillon, I shall report your treasonable talk. Report what you like, but stay out of Dodge. Now, I'll make you a deal, Major. Give me 48 hours and I'll find your killers. You better take it. All right. But I want the criminals delivered here. Sure, Major. And I might have to kill them to get them here. Hello, Doc. 
Doc. Are you drinking up the profit you made off of that soldier? Uh, let's, uh, oh, 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 hello, Marshal. <laughs> uh, uh, the uh, boy's name was Bone, according to the letter I found on him. Uh-huh. Anything else? Yes. Dug a couple of slugs out of him. It's a funny thing, Marshal. I haven't happened on lead like that since 65. What do you mean, Doc? Well, I'd swear that boy was shot with a cavalry pistol. I'll see you later, Doc. And mind you, can't prove it. Not exactly, but I would swear. Come in. Hello, Kate. Did Chester see you? He did. Well? Matt, I get my information through the girl. Some of it's true. Some is bound to be just talk. I'll weed it out. Carney's been seen riding out at night toward the Arkansas down by Brandy Bend. What for? Well, I don't know. Could be this fellow Billy Grounds. Yeah. His name's never been mentioned around here. My guess is he's never been in town. Anything else? One thing. Corporal Bowers and Connie went for a ride one night. When? Night before that payroll was robbed. Yeah, figures. Where's Connie now? Over at the Longhorn, eating a steak. It's kind of late for supper, isn't it? She works late. Matt. Yeah? Next girl I steer you into, I'll pull her fangs first. <laughs> no, thank you, Kate. I like them better this way. <laughs> Surprise, Marshal. May I sit down? Of course. Thank you. You sure Corporal Bowers won't mind? Don't be silly. Anyway, he's away at the fort. Uh huh? What time do you leave, Connie? I don't know. About seven, I think. Why? Anyone with him? Yeah, Private Bone. Marshal, you think Bowers shot him, is that it? You know any reason why he would, Connie? They were friends. They worked together in the bookkeeping office. I see. Tell me, Connie, Bowers say much about his job there, or well, what he does and all? No, Marshal. He never talked about it. Handled expenses for supplies and the like? Figured out the payroll? I don't know. Bowers would be in a good spot to know when to expect the payroll money in, wouldn't he? Even when it was kept a secret? You'd have to ask him, Marshal. I don't know anything about the Army. But... This isn't why you found me here, is it? <laughs> of course not, Connie. I'm, I'm sorry. Hey, you look real pretty tonight. Why, thank you, Marshal. You really mean it? Sure. Sure I do. I have to work late tonight, but I can get off tomorrow evening. Marshal, would you go for a ride with me? There'll be a moon. Where would we ride to, Connie? I don't know. Anywhere, maybe. Maybe along the Arkansas. Oh, I know. Let's let's ride down toward Brandy Bend. All right, okay. Connie. We ride down to Brandy Bend. You're all dressed up, Mr. Dillon. Are you going somewhere? Yeah, after supper I am, Chester. Got me an engagement. Going riding with Connie Dell. In the moonlight along the river. Is she a nice girl, Mr. Dillon? All girls are nice, Chester. Some fall in with bad company, that's all. Yes, sir. Mr. Dillon? Yeah. Who'd this one fall in with? Me. Oh, now, Mr. Dillon, that's not so. Then who'd you think, Chester? Well, come on, tell me. Billy Grounds? You don't give me much credit for romance, Chester. No, sir. <laughs> well, don't look so worried about it. Yeah. I, I was thinking, would you like me to follow you tonight, Indian style? Uh, thanks, Chester, but it wouldn't help. You see, I'm riding into an ambush. It'll be over fast. Real fast. 
Well, all right, Mr. Dillon, if that's where you want it. That's the way it's got to be. Uh, and as soon as I leave, I want you to ride out to Fort Dodge and see the major. Yes, sir. Uh, what uh, about... Tell him to arrest Corporal Bowers for the murder of Private Bone. I think Bone found out where the leak about that payroll money came from, and Bowers had to shut him up. The major won't like that, will he? Well, tell him I'll prove it. And anyway, I think Bowers will confess fast enough when the time comes. When will that be, Mr. Dillon? When I get back to town. With Billy Grounds. What about the girl? Well, it's like I told you, Chester. Nice girl. Bad company. You know, I had me a girl once. Huh? Well, you never told me about that, Chester. What happened? It was over in Abilene. I gave her my money to go to St. Louis and buy some wedding clothes. She wanted that. So? Well, I don't know, Mr. Dillon. I guess she just liked it there in St. Louis. I'm going down the street, Chester. You better get started for the fort soon. Yes, sir, Mr. Dillon. Uh, hello, Shiloh. I feel a little drunk coming on, Marshal. Well, then check your guns back there with Chester. Well, what if the army comes tonight? I'll need my gun. And stay sober. Uh, but uh, if the army doesn't come, I'll have stayed sober for nothing. Every man's got his problem, Shiloh. But uh, if I see you drunk and wearing your gun, you'll wake up brokenhearted in jail tomorrow. Well, I'm going to get drunk enough to draw on you, Marshal. That's so, Shiloh? Then some night you're going to die. Marshal? Oh, hello, Connie. I got off a little early. Shall we go now? Anytime. I keep my horse at the National. I'll meet you at the edge of town. Oh, Ashamed to be seen with me? Oh, well, no, Marshal. But well, you know how people talk. Sure, Connie. I'll wait for you just down the trail. I'll hurry. Now we come pretty fast, Connie. You want to get on for a minute? I'm all right. All right. We'll let the horses blow a little and then move on, huh? You nervous, Connie? No. Why? Well, then sit down and relax. All right. This better? Yeah. Ah, sure is a nice night. Yeah, it's beautiful. You're not even looking at it, Connie. Is something on your mind? No, of course not. Why should there be? I don't know. You tell me. It, it's nothing, Marshal, really. Connie, let me ask you something. You ever see a man killed? What? Why'd you say that? Well, did you? Yes. Once in the saloon. Ah. Tell me. Do you have a fair chance? Yeah, he even drew first. Then you never saw a man shot in the back. Or ambushed. What do you mean, Marshal? I think it sort of goes against your grain, Connie. The idea of a man being killed without a fair chance. I get it, Marshal. All right. Go ahead. Down by the river near Brandy Bend, Billy Grounds is waiting to shoot me in the back. Then why did you come, Marshal? It's my job. I suppose you know about everything. I think so. What are you going to do? Connie, unless I made a mistake about you, I, I think you're going to let me have a fair chance at him. Somehow. Why should I? What does it mean to me? I don't know, Connie. I, I don't know. 
But you think about it. You think about it all the way to Brandy Bend. Now, come on, let's ride. Make a nice camp down here. Plenty of wood. Get your own water right out of the Arkansas. Don't you think, Connie? A man could hide out for a long time down here. Marshal. He could be safe here, even while the army was trying to move into Dodge. A lot of men were being killed back there. It's peaceful here. Quiet. Marshal, I can't do it. Tell me, Connie. That, that big cottonwood up ahead, on the left. All right. Keep moving. When we get there, I'm going to ride fast. I'll hang on to the offside of my horse for cover. When I start, you turn around. Get back out of gunfire. Yeah, it sure is pretty down here, Connie. You know, maybe someday we can come down and go fishing, huh? That river's full of catfish. Did you ever get a catfish dinner? Oh, they can be mighty good when they're small. Back, Connie. Connie? Connie? Yeah, he's dead, Connie. I'm all right, Marshal. I'm sorry about this, Connie. I'm sorry I had to do it. He killed your horse. I'll show you where his is. And the money. Then you can take me back to Dodge. To jail. All right, Connie. But you won't be in jail for long. You have my word. Not for long. Let's go, Marshal. Gunsmoke, under the direction of Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was especially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in tonight's cast were Michael Ann Barrett and Jeanette Nolan, with Harry Bartell and Don Diamond. Parley Bear is Chester, and Howard McNear is Doc. Join us again next week. As Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke. The adventure just begins with Gunsmoke on CBS Radio. Still ahead tonight... Gene Autry, Tarzan, Gangbusters, and Stars in the Air. Yes, listen in for them all on most of these same CBS radio stations. This is Roy Rowan speaking. And remember, for your free convention handbook, write to Time, CBS Chicago 90, Illinois. This is the CBS Radio Network. <laughs>